Hey everybody, hope you're doing great today. This is Paul from Aquariums and Gardens. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to do a quick water change for your aquarium. So I am here in my unfinished basement, so you have to forgive the look of this. Uh, I do have my tank upstairs, 55 gallon. I will do a video in the future, kind of showing you the, the setup of that tank and the fish that are in that tank. And I am working on a fish room right now that is uh, back in that corner over there of my basement. So that's, uh, it's also unfinished, but I'm working on uh, finishing it up. I'm adding insulation, covering up the ceiling. So why do we do our water changes in our aquariums? Well, one of the biggest reasons is to take the nitrates out of the tank. You know, you, you've got uh, fish in there, the fish are producing waste, uh, food is decaying in there. And that over, you know, through the nitrogen cycle, that causes the nitrogen to go up in the tank. Too much nitrogen is a bad thing for your fish. So by changing the water out, taking water out, putting fresh water in, you are actually you are reducing the nitrates. Now the, the frequency of that depends on, you know, your stock load, how much you feed your fish, whether you have plants in the tank or not, the size of the tank. But the short of it is, you know, we need to do water changes on a regular basis just for the health of our, our fish. So think of an analogy if, you know, you and your home, you know, if your home is completely sealed off from the outside, you're not getting fresh air inside, you know, you're cooking in there, you're putting out, you know, carbon dioxide from, you know, from your breathing. And then, you know, over time that air is just going to become bad for your health. Same thing for the fish. You know, over time that the nitrates build up in that tank, it's not good for the fish. Assuming a properly cycled tank, you know, you don't have any issues with nitrites or ammonia. It's the nitrates that's going to cause a problem. So plants, while plants do help, with uh, removing nitrates, you know, water changes are still going to be the best way to do that. And you also need to be testing on a regular basis too to make sure those nitrates are within the parameters that, you know, they're not too high where it's going to harm your fish. Another reason to change out the water is, you know, most, most water, if it's coming straight out of the tap, you've got some sort of minerals in there and those minerals are beneficial for the fish. I mean, you might've heard of like, you know, hard water, soft water. Some, for, some fish prefer soft water, some fish prefer hard water. Regardless of the type of water you have, there's always some mineral content in that water, unless you're using reverse osmosis or RO water. In which case, those using RO water generally are adding minerals into their tank just to make sure their fish have the, the needed minerals to, to survive. Same thing with the water in the tank. You know, those fish will, you know, if you have a fish in there, you got plants, you got any other invertebrates in there, they absorb the, the uh, minerals in there. They use the minerals, you know, for their own building blocks, building their own bodies. And, you know, so you need to replace that as you take water out, you know, you're taking that, some of that depleted water out, you're putting clean water in. And with that clean water that, you know, that helps keep that cycle going, helps the fish keep, uh, keep and remain healthy. So in this video, I will link up above here I talked about how you can reuse your aquarium water in your household plants, in your garden, uh, on your lawn, rather than throwing it down the drain, which is, you know, in my mind, it's a big waste, you know, rather take that green way and, you know, you reuse that water in your garden. You know, one of the, one of the biggest components of fertilizers you buy from your stores, you know, for your garden, for your grass or whatnot, if you look at it, the, one of the largest uh, components in that is nitrogen. And so what we're doing when we're doing water changes, we're taking the nitrates, which is a form of nitrogen, out of the tank. So rather than dumping it down the drain, why not put it in your garden? Why not put it on your grass, put it on your indoor plants, you know, give them some of that extra nutrients that they need. If you could, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. The fish will really appreciate it. And so will I. So with this method that I use for draining my tanks, uh, it allows me to reuse the water. I mean, there, one, one easy way is, you know, you could run a hose, run it outside, either via siphon, if the, assuming the tank is higher than the outdoor level. You know, you need the siphon, uh, part of the siphon, the way it works is through gravity. And so you can, you know, run outside or, you know, you go buy one of those inline pumps, you know, hook up a couple of hoses, drop one hose into the tank, you know, let it siphon out. And then uh, you can do the same way, you know, going from the, the uh, tap to the, to the tank. Now it is important to, you know, you can't, most cases you can't take water straight from your tap and dump it in your tank because it has chloramines or it has chlorine and that's very harmful for your fish. So there are products out there, uh, like this is one I specifically use, API tap water conditioner. So products like this will remove chloramines, remove chlorine from your water. 
So I'm going to show you some of the tools that I use, some of the equipment that I use to do my water changes, and then uh, explain how they're helpful. So we have the tap water conditioner, take out the chloramines, the, the chlorine, you know, which is very harmful for fish. You know, it's got dosing instructions on the back. Then when adding new water to your tank, I always use a instant read thermometer. So with this instant read thermometer, it tells me the temperature that's coming out of the tap. And that way I can match it as closely as possible to my tank. Uh, same thing, you know, if you're doing a huge water change, you need to keep your water temperature as close as possible because your fish can sh suffer shock if the temperature varies quite a bit compared to, you know, the water changes. You know, you're going four or five degrees more, you know, than what your tank is, either higher or lower, can cause problems, can cause health problems for your fish. Now for this water change method, this is strictly water change. I'm not doing any gravel vacuuming. So in the case, if I were doing gravel vacuuming, I would be using something like this, a python siphon over here, you know, vacuuming out the gravel. Depending on your tank too, you might not, you might not need to do it all the time. Uh, I, do, I do not, certainly do not uh, gravel vac a lot. I, uh, I've got a main tank, 55 gallon upstairs. And this tank that I'm gonna show you on, this is a, a hospital tank, a quarantine tank. So there's no gravel in this right now. Usually once a month, I will use a gravel vac uh, like we have there, but the most parts, you know, I've got rooted plants in there. So they're live plants and they, they actually prefer, you know, they like that, that mulm in there and that it basically becomes nutrients for the plants. They kind of use that to, to grow. So I don't want to, I don't want to do too much vacuuming on there because then I'm taking out those nutrients for those plants. So if you do have a heavy fish load and you know, you don't have live plants in there, then yeah, definitely gravel lacking is good. It's important to do. So you need to do that on a regular basis. So in my case, to do the water change, I uh, purchased two of these. And the, the main reason is for with this, you know, once I put the water into this bucket over here, I can take it around. I could take it, you know, if I've got planting plants indoors, I can take it around the house, you know, water those indoor plants. Or, you know, in my case, I, I have maybe one or two indoor plants. Most of my plants are outside in my garden and whatnot. They're outdoors. And this is easy to use once it's filled up, you know, take it out, walk it out, pour it on whatever plants you want, and then you're good to go. So I bought this from Lowe's. It's a two gallon plastic watering jug, about $8, I believe, going right now. And, uh, you know, I did make some modifications to this over here because, you know, my garden plants, I've got uh, uh, quite a few too. I don't want to sit there and wait. It's a little slower flowing on this. So I actually took a drill you know, drilled a bunch of larger holes in there that just causes the water to flow out faster. And you know, that's why I'm holding it less, you know, this can get a little heavy uh, over time. So the faster I can get rid of the water, the better. At the same time too, I don't want it, you know, completely flowing out and just eroding all the soil, which I'll show you the, now I do keep two separate ones. This one is only for the used water. And I do have the second one, which is just for the fresh water. So the only thing I put in this watering can is fresh water and the dechlorinator. And I will use this. I do have some uh, indoor hydroponic plants. So I will use this same thing too. The only thing I do with that is put in water. I don't put any fertilizer or anything like that. I'll add fertilizers directly to the hydroponic con uh, container itself. Uh, that way I can reuse this, you know, when I'm pouring it in the tank. The only thing that there, like I said, fresh water, dechlorinator. Dechlorinator is not going to hurt my hydroponics and the dechlorinator is beneficial for uh, the aquarium. So what I'll do is I will fill this can up, uh, you know, check on the temperature, make sure the temperature matches the, the tank that I'm putting it in. And then uh, from there, just pour it in there. And the reason I cut that off too, is just to make it pour faster. So I don't want to so slow pour with this too, because when it's going into the tank, it's more just about filling the tank. I'm not worried about eroding soil. Uh, but if you do have sand or gravel in your tank, you know, you don't want that washing away, then you just need to watch where you're pouring it on. Usually I've got, uh, for my big tank upstairs, I'll pour it on top of my 3D background that kind of diffuses the water, make sure it doesn't blast the sand everywhere, uh, doesn't blast the debris everywhere. So depending on your tank, your setup, you know, you could do the same thing. I just prefer to cut it off, you know, just a, a simple hacksaw, just cut it off and then it pours much quicker. And to help with the siphoning out the water, I, I bought this siphon uh, from Amazon. I believe it's like $13 running right now. It's, it's reusable. You know, so this, the only thing I use it for is for my aquariums. I don't use it for anything else. That way it's, uh, you know, it's just aquarium water. There's nothing else going in there. Uh, the main parts of it here, you know, this, 
this bellows comes off. This is what uh, creates the suction. That way, you, you know, you don't have to put your mouth to the to the tube. You're not uh, getting a mouthful of aquarium water. It has a little cap on top. You just adjust it, uh, you know, open it up to let the air flow in. And it, got, it has a couple of flapper valves, uh, one up here and one down here. And then, you know, as the water comes in, it just, it opens up. Occasionally you might get a, a situation like with this over here, there's a flapper valve that goes up this way. And sometimes it's stuck, you know, it gets stuck up in that place. And so it won't, be, it won't create a uh, proper suction. So what I'll do is I'll just tap it on the tank and then it'll drop down. Or sometimes you just, you know, flick it firmly, it'll drop down and that'll let you uh, create the suction. So if you do have an issue with something like this, it's not creating a suction, you know, just check the valves where are they, if they're stuck up there, you know, just tap it, bring it down, you know, tap it on the, uh, on the side of the aquarium there gently and it should drop down. And then once that's going, it's gonna start the water flow. So with this process, like I said, these buckets right here, they're about two gallons. Uh, so, you know, I'm not doing huge water changes. This is more I would do for a small tank uh, I have used this method for my 55 gallon tank upstairs. Uh, those are uh, Lake Tanganyikan fish. So there's uh, Lake Tanganyikan cichlids, got uh, Julitochromis, Cyprochromis, uh, and uh, loopies in there. So they're a little, a little more sensitive, so you can't do huge water changes for that tank. So what I'm doing is about, you know, no more than 20, 30%. Uh, for doing larger water changes, I have a different method than this. But uh, sometimes in the winter, I do get some evaporation. So what I'll do is I might, you know, do one or two jugs of this, go pour it out in the garden, and then uh, just refill it up, you know, a couple of this. It's, it's you know, it is a bit of a workout. It's, uh, you know, a little good exercise for you. But, uh, you know, rather than running a hose, wasting water, I mean, that, this is at least my method. So in the case like uh, this, with this two-gallon bucket here, if I'm doing it on my 20-gallon tank here, I've got a 20 gallon long tank that I'm going to demonstrate it on. It's, a, it's about a 10% water change for one bucket. If you need to do more than that, you, you know, you definitely, you can do more. It's, it's a little extra effort, but in my case, it's, uh, you know, like I said, I'm reusing the water and in my garden, I don't have to use any fertilizer because I use, you know, the aquarium water and I use a Bokashi composting method too. And just a side note, I do do this in the winter as, uh, as well too. I mean, here we are in, uh, Southwest Ohio, not, obviously nothing's growing outside there, you know, it's too cold for anything to grow, but I still pour this water, the aquarium water into my garden beds over there. You know, over time it's, the nitrates are gonna get, uh, you know, they'll, they'll kind of stay in place over there. You know, there's, uh, it's good soil, it's just building it to whatever, you know, if I'm doing any vacuuming too, if I'm cleaning out my filters, I'll squeeze those out in the uh, you know into the water as well too, and just pour that in there. And I'm adding basically to the to the biology of the uh, of the soil. You know whatever organic matter is going in there. There's there's certainly bacteria and, and other things there. You know fungi who's going to enjoy that. So I do do it in the winter time as too, as well. Uh, I do usually do you know because of the you know the cold. I don't want to be out there outside too long. You know I'll do smaller water changes with a fewer fewer. Uh, of the watering cans and then uh you know that that does it for the garden over there so here's a 20 gallon as i meant was mentioning excuse the mess i've got a lot of uh chemicals a little tub of paint that i use to paint the back of the tank right now this is a planted tank there are snails in there there's no fish in there so i don't have any substrate right now as there are no fish in here i don't worry as much about the water level it's more about plants. I'm actually growing out some of these plants in here. This one has uh, two filters. There's a sponge filter. Currently it's turned off right now. And there's a uh, mechanical filter on the back over there. It's probably hard to see in this, uh, in this view. So let's start the process now of the siphoning. So we're gonna take water out of this tank. And like here's the siphon right here, if you can see it. So this, uh, this end over here is gonna go straight into the bucket. And this end will go inside the tank. So one of the things you do need to make sure, you know, if, if you're not getting a good enough siphon is the, uh, because it's partially gravity driven, you know, the tank, uh, sorry, the, the watering can needs to be a little lower. So if you've got a little table or something like that, if you need to reduce, you know, depending on the height of your tank, you might need to lower it in order to get the best, uh, best suction. So that noise you hear is uh, 
some of the gurgling from the siphon, the water going into the watering can. And if the water does slow down a little bit, if you're, you know, losing suction, then you might need to squeeze, you know, adjust the, uh, the knob on top of here and, and pump it some more to get it flowing. Usually once it's going, it'll, uh, it'll keep flowing. But some, occasionally some air gets up in there, then it, uh, it does stop and you just need to, you know, pump it again and it should start flowing. You might be able to see right here, there's that valve I was mentioning, the flapper valve. Right now it's supposed to be open and then, uh, it, you know, it needs to be closed when you're siphoning. If it's not moving, then you just need to tap it down, you know, quick tap over there. It should help move it if this is the type of siphon you're using. And I would recommend this one too, because like I said, using this bellows over here, no mouth, mouth to mouth uh, resuscitation needed to uh, keep your siphon going, just pump it. And when I'm going towards fill level, you know, I'm going about up to this point here on the bucket, you know, looking inside, seeing where the water is, you know, any higher, it gets a little unwieldy, shaky, you're more likely to spill it. You know, if it's an easy, quick, quick hop to your plants or going outside, that's great, but I have to walk on some carpeted areas and the last thing I need is to uh, dump some quarry water on the, uh, on the carpet. Okay, I'm about filled up here. So in order to break the siphon, all you do is just, you know, lift it up into the air, let the water drain out, and then you're done. And this bucket is ready to drain. I'm gonna go take it outside. So even in the winter time, I will still drain the water out here. As you can see, I'm getting a pretty fast flow. And that's what I want. I want it to get out fast. That's less time I'm standing here holding this. So I did already fill up the watering can over here that with the fresh water and the dechlorinator. The dechlorinator is not only beneficial for your fish, it's also beneficial for the, the uh, bacterial life in your tank. The bacteria basically that are processing the ammonia, processing the nitrites uh, into nitrate. You don't want it to have your tank, uh, you know, kill your your cycle there and then you know you're gonna have to start all over again that's that's one another reason why you need to get rid of chlorine and chloramines out of the water before you put it into your tank and that's as high as i'm going to go with this uh, uh with this filling i just did a one for one exchange you know took out two gallons put in two gallons like i said this is a quarantine tank right now it's more just a plant grow out tank uh, so i don't plan on doing much with it. I haven't cleaned much. There's no substrate in there either. The only thing, uh, the only living things in there are the, uh, are the snails and the plants. And with that, that's the method that I use for a quick water change and then reuse that water for my garden or for my indoor plants. Let me know what you think of the video. Is that something you, you would consider doing? Uh, is there a different way? I mean, what, what way do you use dispose of your water and reuse the water versus just throwing it away? Let me know in the comments down below. And again, I thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.